Hey, welcome back guys. In this video, I will show you how you can handle errors elegantly within your test. Before we see how we can do that, let's talk about why we need to handle errors in the first place. So usually if there's an error within your test, you would want the test to fail. And that is true for the 95% of the scenarios. But you will run into certain scenarios where you will encounter an error and you would want to handle that error differently. So instead of just throwing the error and failing the test, you would want to do something else instead. So for example, if you're trying to find an element and if that element is not there, you want to do something else instead there. You might probably want to verify some text. You might probably want to go in and retry the entire scenario, depending on whatever your use case is. Or let's say if you're trying to click on a button and if that button is not clickable for whatever reason, you would instead want to just refresh the page and try something else instead. And these are all unique scenarios, but based on your application, you might run into them once in a while specifically if you're working on a really dynamic application. Let's take a look at one of the scenarios that we will be covering in this video. So I'm here on the Practice Automation Bro website and on that I've opened up the shop page. Now within the shop page, we have the search product field over here. So if I click on that and if I type in up any product, so for example, from here, if I type in toys, I'm gonna enter toys here and I will click on the search button. What this will do is it will open up this page, which is the toys page, and it will give me all this information related to that product. So this is one of the use case, and this is what we're going to be testing. But since this is a dynamic application, the shop product is being handled by, let's say some of your sales team or someone who's actually handling this website. Now, based on the product quantity, the particular item might be in the actual shop list, or it might not be in the shop list. For example, if all your toys have been sold out, they might take out the toys entirely from here. So when you will be actually searching for that, instead, it will just tell you that the product is not available in this particular website at the moment. So you know, those kind of websites that you see where you search for a product, so instead of seeing the product, you end up seeing that, oh, the product is not available or it's out of stock or something like that. So that's a pretty common use case that you will run into. So here to give you an example, let's say if I want to search for a keyboard or maybe sunglasses or something, which is I know that is not here in this my product list right now. And if I hit search here, Let's see what happens. So when I do that, it actually tells me that the no products were found for that particular selection. So because I know that the keyboard or whatever that I'm trying to search for here is actually not available. So instead it gave me this error. Now this is a really unique scenario because let's say if you're creating your automation test and you're searching for something, let's say your uh, toys over here and you know right now the toys are there on the website and you're able to go to that page. But maybe in future when it actually goes out of stock, it won't even be there. Now I know there are many ways to actually handle the scenarios more elegantly where you would want to make sure that you're only searching for the product that are there. You might want to mock your products. You might want to do something scenarios that are basically will actually handle this better ways. But let's say if you're not able to do all of those things, rather you're just working with an existing application where you cannot control the products that are being available on the website. So in that case, what would you do? Because you're going to search for something and you're going to run into that issue where the product is sometimes there, some other times it's not there. So let's take a look at what will happen when we will actually try to implement this within our code. Okay, so I'm over here in PyCharm and in the PyCharm what I did is I created a new class. I call this one shop test and the shop test basically inheritance the shop page class. If I open up shop page, shop page just have basically some of my selectors and it just have a single method which is opening the shop page. So really straightforward, nothing fancy here. And if I go to test shop over here, so right now all I'm trying to do is open that page. Now what we will do is add in our test for searching the product and then asserting the product image. So to search for the product, I'm just going to add in the search product thing, which is over here, which is search input. And then I'm going to click on the search button. So I will do self dot send keys to actually send some text there. And here I'm going to add in my selectors, which is my self dot search input. And then the selector that I'm going to search for is toys here, which is fine. And then the next thing we're going to do is click on the search button. So I will do self dot click. Then I will do self dot search button and I will click on that. So this will search for toys and then it will click on the search button, so which is good. And this, that's exactly what we did when we were manually testing this. Then I want to assert the product image. So this is the image that comes up when the new website or the new page that opens up. And on that new page, you can see the actual toys image over there or basically the product image. So if I'm going to come here, you can see that we have this product image. So I'm just going to verify that. I will do self dot assert element. That's so going to make sure that the element is there and that's my image element. 
and here i'm simply going to search for the actual um product image so that is my product image and i've just added that here so let's run this scenario to see if this would work for us so i'm just going to do pytest dash k and then search for test underscore search so this will run my test search file right over here and i'm going to hit enter okay so i ran the test and as you can see it successfully passed so that's pretty good so it went to the toys page and from the toys page it verified the product image so this is exactly what we wanted now let's imagine someone went into the website and they have actually gotten rid of toys from there so you cannot search for toys anymore instead they have replaced it with some other particular product right so what would happen now so when you will actually run this test now let's say if imagine instead of toys you you probably had sunglasses here so if i type in sunglasses so i know that on my website i do not have sunglasses right now and if i search for that if i run that right now let's see what happens okay so it's searching for sunglasses here and then you see this no products were found matching your selection because we don't really have that product in our website so this is what we need to test out now the error that we will get it will tell us that oh there was the no such exception for this particular text that you were looking for so which was my product image i was looking for that and it's saying that oh that element is actually not there and that is expected because the product is not there hence the element is not there as well so what would you do if you're dealing with this dynamic behavior now like i mentioned an ideal way of handling this is making sure that the product you're searching for is always there on your website but let's say if you cannot control that instead you would want to make sure that hey okay if the product is not there what i would rather want to do is assert for the text which is basically it's telling me that the no products are available on the website so i don't want to assert for my actual product image instead i want to assert that the um products that are there on the website are not available so the text that we were seeing which was no products were found matching a selection we would rather want to assert on that instead but what's happening is while we're actually trying to do that right over here we just get the no such element exception so how can we handle that huge scenario that if we get this exception we would want to do something else instead so i know this sounds complicated but this is actually pretty straightforward to implement so we're going to add in a basic try catch and we will handle this exception and we will say okay if you run into this particular exception at this point what i would want you to do is instead assert for a text and this is the text that i'm going to be providing you so that's the scenario that we're going to implement instead over here so let's take a look at how we can do it so we are already setting for that element and now what i will do is add in a try catch here so i'm going to say okay you try to search for that product image if you get the product image everything is good right but if you cannot get that product image and if you run into an exception and the exception that it's running into as you can see here that is no such element exception so i'm just going to copy that here and i'm going to say okay if you're running into the no such element exception at that point what i want you to do is basically assert the text so here i will say self dot assert text and then i'm going to say okay what text it needs to assert so i will just paste that here which i already copied before so this is the text which is no products were found matching a selection and then i'm going to add in my actual selector so my selector i have already added that before as well which is no products text if i hover over to this you can see that it's actually telling me that there's an unresolved reference for no such element exception and the reason for that is because my test does not really know about this no such element exception so i'm getting that error when i'm actually running the test but my test exactly doesn't really know that there is such kind of exception so to let my test know that okay you need to be aware of this exception is i can do that by importing that exception from the selenium library so let's do that so i'm going to do from selenium dot common dot exceptions import and if i do control space i can see all the exceptions that i can import so i right now we are only focusing on the no such element exception but let's say if you're working on a click or if you're working on some interactable which is for the input fields or for the button you can do all of that over here as well if you're maybe verifying for something is visible on the screen or not you might be dealing with some kind of opacity where it's reducing or increasing you can work with element not visible exception and you can handle that particular use case as well in my case i am only working with the no such element exception so i'm just going to import that the moment i do that my error just goes away so that's pretty good so let's see what we're doing so we're trying to make sure that whether our product image is there so it's going to search for that it says hey is the product image there if it's not there it will throw me an exception and the exception it will throw is no such element exception at that point i wanted to assert this text i want to make sure okay i know that the product is not there maybe something happened rather what i want you to do is just print this out instead or basically not print this out or verify that this text is actually there on the page all right so let's add in some print statements here 
so that we know what exactly is happening. So I will say that this one is within my trap block. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to print this one out and I will say this is my exception or exception block. Now I'm going to run this test just the way we were running before, but I'm going to add the dash s flag so that I can see the printout statements and I'm going to hit enter. Okay, so now it's searching for sunglasses and now as you can see it's saying no products were found. So we're getting the same error that we were getting before. Well, basically not an error, the same text that's saying the products are not available. And at this point, if I just move this up, there you go. We are seeing one pass. So instead of it failing just the way it failed before and it told us that there was no such exception. Instead, what we are getting is pass over here. And you can see here in our print statements, it basically went to the within trap block. So it tried to assert for that element. It couldn't find that after six seconds, which was the timeout that we had, it went to the exception block. And then in the exception block, it took a look at that what exactly it's doing. So it's checking that, okay, it's trying to assert for that text and it found that text for that particular selector. So basically it says, okay, everything looks good. My catch um, exception that we have over there, it's everything is working fine there. So it ended up passing our test. So this thing is really powerful guys, because now you're able to handle exceptions as well. So maybe if there are some particular use case where you're trying to do and you're running into some kind of exception because of dynamic behavior, now you can control it this way. You can add in your try catch block or your try accept block and there you can um, basically catch your errors based on whatever error you're running into. Now that could be once again, no such element. It could be whether the um, button is not clickable or whether that input field is not interactable. You can add all such uh, exceptions over here and you can deal it a lot more elegantly. So just to make sure our previous use case is still working, if I search for toys over here and then just run the test quickly to make sure that this is still working fine. At this point, we should not see the exception block. Instead, we should just see the within trap block and then it should just uh, stop over there. So there you go. This time also our test pass. And but if you notice, we just see our within trap block over here printed out. We didn't see the exception block because what happens is when it goes to the trap block, it knows that there was no error thrown out. Everything looks good. So it just stops the test right here without even entering our accept block. And that is exactly what we wanted. All right, so I hope this helped you out guys. And if there are some unique scenarios that you're running into and if where you need to handle such kind of errors, I hope using this method, you will be able to handle that now. That's it for this video guys. If you enjoyed this video, remember to smash that like button and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more content like this. And don't forget to hit that bell icon. Also leave a comment below if you have any questions related to this video or if there's some other topic you would like me to create content on as well. That's all for now guys. I will see you all in the next one.